Welcome to St. Edward as we celebrate the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please stand. Come my Christ, you built on the bedrock. God will us faithful through each passing year. Spirit led, you welcome a stranger. Promise of new life awakening here. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of good
Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Well, the Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within the doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands? When I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord. Yes. 
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the life of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who might live no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is the Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On that day, as the evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with him in a boat, just as he was, and others' boats were with them. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already filling, filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even the wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. God is all-powerful, God is all-loving, therefore we should trust God and do as he guides us to do. Lord, increase our trust in you. Amen. That's really all that needs to be said. That's it. Yet there's a little problem. (laughs) 
No, the problem is not that I'm going to keep talking. <laughs> the boat's sinking. Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? Sometimes it seems in our life, even though we know that God's all-powerful and God's all-loving, it really seems like he doesn't care. And that's an issue. All of us run upon it at one point in our lives, maybe more than one time. Maybe it happens quite often. Where is all that love and all that power? How come we're not using some of that power to fix some of our problems? How come we're not using some of that awesome love to get rid of some of these major issues in our world? And so we start to conclude. Most of the time we don't do this in a, in a thought-out, rational way, but it starts to invade like a cloud in our heart. And more or less the words that come into our heart are as well, God doesn't care and there's nothing I can do to make him care. And then sometimes those little clouds, well, it's all a farce. So we should just all go home and stop being hypocritical about this and all this useless business of prayer in church. We can't make them care. And then there's also those clouds which I think gather all too frequently in the hearts of our younger people. Not only, but also, and I think prevalently. God probably doesn't even exist. And we probably just made him up as a creation in our minds because we can't really deal with all the meaningless stupidities of our human existence, so we might as well try to make up somebody that you know maybe might be able to help us out. But because that's kind of a gloomy way to live, it normally kind of concludes on the next step. So let's just love each other and forget about all this church prayer business. Where's all that start? Where do all those gloomy thoughts start? Do they start with a, a study of history, a study of sacred scripture, a study of the years of the saints who have come in with their amazing lives and their, their miracles and their hearts so full of love and so giving? No, it doesn't start there. It starts with this inescapable feeling that God doesn't care. Because the boat is sinking and he's sleeping. I think none of us really need a list of the problems, not just in our world today, but in our church. What boat are we talking about? The boat has always traditionally been the image of the church. The boat that Jesus Christ built for us so that we wouldn't have to try to swim through the storms of life, but we would have a boat that could get us there faster and further and we could do much more. But there's a problem. The boat is sinking. Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? Why are there so many people in our world today, people that we know, people that in a, are in our families who don't believe? Maybe they might believe something vague, but they don't really believe in the church. They don't believe that the church is God's instrument in the world. The, the presence of Jesus Christ in the world today. I 
think we've all noticed that there is, it's not the most beautiful moment in the life of the church these days. And you can say, Father, why are you getting so down? Why are you so dark today? Come on, give me a nice message. I want to go home feeling happy. Don't throw all this dark stuff on me. Well, we read the gospel. Did the gospel end? And they all sunk to the bottom of the Sea of Galilee and drowned to death. No, that's not the way the gospel ended. But you can't ignore the fact that the gospel says there was a storm and they were sinking. So what did they do? Jesus, don't you care that we're sinking? Now you're going to tell me that Jesus, who was 100% human, just like the rest of us, that he was really sleeping That's what the gospel says, that he was sleeping on the boat. If there's a boat that's sinking in the middle of a sea and getting tossed around and filling up with water, do you really think he was sleeping? I mean, he was there with his eyes closed going, I wonder how long it's going to take them. When are they going to come? (laughs) Eventually, they'll get down here and wake me up, even though I'm really not sleeping. But I want them to ask me, I want them to come to me. Why? Why did he do that? Why did he scare the heebie-jeebies out of them? Why did he have them really thinking that the profoundest part of their being, we're going to die? Why did he let them get so scared? Was it his choice or was it theirs? They could have gone down there a lot earlier and said, Hey, Jesus, hey, Jesus, hey, wake up, man. The waves are getting really strong. We could use your help up here. They didn't. Boys, we got this. Hunker down. Come on. I think sometimes that's the way we get in our church today. We're doing all right. We're doing fine. We're still paying the bills. There's still lots of activities going on. And our children and our grandchildren and our nephews and our nieces and our brothers and our sisters and our aunts and our uncles who one after the other, ah, church stuff. We're sinking. There is not enough faith in the world today. Who are we joking? What is it going to take for us to wake up? There's a big bad storm brewing, and the boat's got lots of water of confusion all over. Father, don't be so dang negative. We're doing fine. We're sinking. Now, does that, do I, does that mean that I think we're all going down, we're all going to die at the bottom of the Sea of Galilee? No. And if I did believe that, I wouldn't believe the gospel. But I do believe it's about time we do something different. We got to do something different. It's time for us to say, how are we going to get Jesus to wake up? It's time for us and our families to start saying, we're going to have to pray every day together. It's time for us to say, I don't know, we've been praying this way. It's time to pray something a little bit different. But our gospel today, it speaks to us. It doesn't just speak about some story that happened 2,000 years ago. How dang boring is that? Yawn. It's time to wake Jesus up. It's time to be like the first early church and conquer the Roman Empire with the faith. Do you really think the Catholic Church is changing the United States of America for the better? Are we really an instrument of change in our society, in our world? I'm sorry, but I think not. Not enough. It's time to change. It's time to wake Jesus up. Not because he doesn't care. Because that's just the way he relates to us. 
He wants our energy. He wants our enthusiasm. He wants our participation. He could do it all himself. Storm gone. Why doesn't he? Because he wants us to believe in him. Not just to use him. Hey, Jesus, come here and make my life better. Thanks, you can go away now. He wants a relationship. He wants us to get in there shoulder by shoulder and dig into it with him. Dear Jesus, the boat is sinking. We're taking on water. Our younger generations don't believe. They're confused. Save us. Inspire us to cooperate with you perfectly and to live out our mission. We believe in you. Make us your instruments in this world. Amen. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. We lift up our hearts and our prayers to our Heavenly Father with our pleas to increase in our hearts faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Dear our Holy Father, Pope Francis continues to lead by example in his care and service of the poor and the marginalized. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the work of the church touch all humanity with healing and nourishment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all victims of violence and abuse may have their stories heard and their wounds healed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those whose lives have been dis disrupted by natural disasters find the strength and assistance, assistance they need to rebuild. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, hopeful fathers, and all fathers in heaven remind us of God's strength and unconditional love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick among us, for those undergoing medical treatments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased family and friends, especially John Prill, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we pray for Sam and Juanita Johnson, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for always hearing our prayers and for sending the answer to our prayers. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is our that it that is ours, He humbled Himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Amen. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Now all. let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to refuse you to end of my grief, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you leave today, you'll have an opportunity to stop by the Partners in Education table uh, with Miss Stephanie Burton is there to sell some St. Edward Community t-shirts uh, as well. She'll be taking registry entry fees for the St. Edward Golf Outing in July. Uh, and last but not least on all of that, there is a Bunko next Saturday, June, June the 26th at 6 p.m. with a theme of bring a friend and 70s theme. If you bring three friends, you get to play for free. And it costs $20 to play, so it's not a bad deal. First, second, and third cash prizes, uh, third cash prizes are all part of the deal. And all of those proceeds from t-shirts and the golf gouting and the, and the bunco, all of that goes towards the playground project. So hopefully we can all join in on that. And we have here a, fa a special Father's Day blessing. Believe it or not, tomorrow's Father's Day. That came up on us in a hurry, didn't it? And um, just a thought before that last blessing. Sorry for the second homily. As we um, think about how we want to wake up Jesus, because you know, we know he's in the boat, in our own families. I promise you, I'll keep thinking about how to wake up Jesus on a parish-wide level. And I can guarantee you that the bishops are thinking about this. They've been in big meetings this last week or so, and I'm sure we'll hear more about different ways. So the waters are definitely churning and it's not all bad. So please don't take away any kind of down in the dumps sentiment from the, the boat is sinking um, gospel this weekend. It's good news. But it is a call, a call to open up our eyes to, to the reality and, uh, and to wake him up. And for each of us to have that own sense in our own families, what are we gonna do in our family, my family, what are we gonna do to wake Jesus up? And now, in the light of family, a Father's Day blessing. Almighty God, author and sustainer of human life, every blessing comes from you and you welcome the simple prayers of those who bless your name. Grant that these fathers may live in reliance on your goodness and in faithfulness to, to you for the gift of their children. Give to them and to their children the joyful reassurance that you are always near to protect them. May all fathers and hopeful fathers-to-be Know the joy of unconditional love through the intercession of St. Joseph. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go for Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God.